What's up guys, it's Sia. Thanks so much for being here. Today's video, I don't know if you noticed, I'm totally filming two videos in the same day and did this ninky thing where I put on a different sweater to try and trick you. <laughs> um, today's video, this is going to be a depth year update because I realize that it's been about two months since I've talked about it, so we're circling back around because I think it's important. <laughs> I feel like handling a deck of cards while we talk about it because it just makes me feel better. <laughs> also, do I match the backs? Not really. Not quite. Okay, so depth year 2022. I embarked on a depth year at the beginning of the year, which for me just kind of meant taking a step back from attachment to things and focus more on creating connection. So that's kind of what my brain has been sussing out the most part the last few months. So as I'm sure you may have noticed, more than one deck has come into my life this depth year, which to some might seem as failure, but to me, honestly, I think it's okay. I have reached a very magical place within my relation to tarot that I'm so comfortable with. And I'm gonna try my best to explain that place and why I think it's so important and why it's a perspective that I feel like needs to get some more light shone on it within the spiritual community. So right now, decluttering is, is a thing that a lot of people are doing. I did a declutter because there were some things around that weren't serving me. Just wanted them out, thought it'd be interesting to share, so we did that. But I just want to say that I don't think the reason I decluttered was because I felt like I had too many. Like, one, too many. What is too many? It's all a matter of perspective, and perspective shifts so easily. It jumps all around the place, you know? Too many to some is not enough for others. It's all subjective, it's all relative. And I think what's kind of, I don't know, I was very confused for a while. I was sitting down and I was like, I was starting to become really hard on myself and to try and teach myself, okay, you only need this many. If you have this many, you'll be fine. And then like putting hardcore restrictions on myself and what I was allowed to think about and what I was allowed to enjoy. And it just, it wasn't serving me. It was making me feel bad. And that's not the point. <laughs> the point is not to sit around and feel bad about things you've done in the past because we all know that's no good for anybody. That's just ruminating on, on, you know, digging your heels in and feeling bad doesn't solve problems in itself. You've got to work on so just feeling bad wasn't doing it for me. And when I felt bad, I still, you know, jumped back into the old habits of like, well, I feel bad, so I want to feel better. So, you know, it's like a, a self-fulfilling, self-perpetuating cycle that I'm going to be hard on myself. So I feel bad and don't do it again. But then I feel bad and then I do it again. It's like a, you know, a steamroller <laughs> rolling through my life, which no one needs. Um, what I needed to do was work on my relationship with things. And I think what I did was I began to detach my idea of tarot from the cards. And that has helped me infinitely when it comes to feeling like I want to have everything. Because I, what happens is you feel like you're missing out on a perspective on the tarot if you don't have a certain deck. And while that may be fractionally true, what I said before still stands is that tarot's in here. Once you learn and build on your own internal meanings of the tarot cards, what deck you use doesn't matter. Yes, you can take time and forge a connection with a certain deck, but ultimately, tarot is a spiritual practice that exists outside of the physical world. And tarot decks are in the physical world. <laughs> There's a passage that Wendy, delightful Wendy from Occult Compass, brought to my attention in 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock the tarot bible which i'm sure we all have read but i feel like this it was in the intro we might have glossed over it real quick because we were looking to get to the meaty meanings of the deck and cards and so to speak but she was talking about how about, about decks and how some books when they're talking about tarot will choose to only talk about one deck which ultimately whether intentionally or not assumes that the one that they are talking about is the right tarot the correct tarot the one that is more authentic and valuable than any other tarot in that case. She brought up some names like Aleister Crowley and Paul Foster Case <laughs> that 
you know, that their perspective on the tarot was the only correct one. Whereas I'm gonna, well, she goes on to say that her perspective is to take in a bunch of different perspectives on tarot and understand and realize that the concept of tarot is represented in the cards, but the actual heart of tarot exists outside of their physical and tangible representation. Tarot exists. We just write it down. <laughs> right? Right? That's, that's how it goes. So how many decks you have genuinely doesn't matter. You can have one, you could have a hundred, you could have a thousand. Once you learn tarot, learn to use tarot, you could, you could be given 78 blank pieces of paper and then just write some numbers on them and then you'd be able to read tarot. Like it doesn't, yes, the aesthetics of decks present certain moods. And yeah, I went on for like an hour about spring decks and how these ones work great for spring and so on and so forth. The experience of reading tarot comes from within yourself. The aesthetics of the decks are just kind of like prompts, but everything in your reality you create for yourself. So if you're in a place where you feel bad about all the decks you have, just know that that reality is something that you are creating for yourself in your mind. That, that scenario is is a perspective that you are agreeing to take on about yourself and vice versa. If you only have one deck and you feel bad about that and feel like you need more, that is a perspective that you are taking on for yourself. You are adopting that perspective, those wants, and you were taking them into yourself and you were deciding that that's how you want to think about your relation to those material objects. But you exist outside of the realm of the material objects. <laughs> so what I'm learning is one gratitude which will do so much so many number of things gratitude it it keeps you content with what you have which is great but beyond that it it makes you appreciate your perspective on the things so you come before the things. You are more important than the things. The way you read tarot and the way you understand tarot outside of how many decks you have is more important than the decks you have, right? We all know this. We all know this in our core, but we're all trying to we're all trying to deepen our knowledge, right? That's what we, we want to we want to know more. We want to learn more. That's why I've written many symbols and numbers on many pages trying to suss out the meaning of things and Deep in my heart, do I do I feel like I'm ever going to find the solution to these? No. <laughs> Am I going to crack the meaning of life? The secret code that's going to make everything blissful and, you know, a utopia, a, a nirvana that I can achieve? No, I, I genuinely believe I'll never get there. But the journey is the point. The road you take is the reason. Your experience is that path. And when you get to the end, that's the end of this particular go-round, right? So the point is not to get to the end. <laughs> so. Wow, what am I even on about? Okay. So, so tarot decks. <laughs> Very deep and interesting perspective on that. Tarot decks are objects. You can appreciate them for the object they are. I'm not saying write them off. I'm not saying have no tarot decks, because that's dumb. And I'm not saying have a thousand tarot decks. Have as many as you want. And... Don't feel bad about it. Perhaps if it is putting you in a financial state that you're struggling with, then maybe there's some things there you need to address, but the actual on paper number of tarot decks or anything, it can be anything. It could be anything that you have a propensity for accumulating, but they're just objects. And we're trying to have connections with objects when instead we should probably be trying to have connections with people. Something that someone said to me recently kind of struck a chord and that it's about connection and not attachment, which I found very interesting. So in trying to foster connections with our, with the decks that we use to read tarot, what might be actually happening is that an attachment is growing as opposed to a connection, right? So I find it's very helpful for me to ask, am I connected to this deck or am I just attached to it? And I will come out and say that there are a bunch of them that I'm just attached to and that the connection has yet to grow. And it's not a bad thing. It's not saying I should throw out every deck that I just have an attachment to. It's just that some of them I just need to work on forming a connection with a little bit more. 
And that's when the decluttering comes in. If I am unable to find a connection to it and I'm just weirdly attached to it, then maybe that relationship needs to be reassessed, you know? So that is kind of where I'm sitting with tarot at the moment. Tarot as object, tarot as, like I can appreciate the beauty in them for what they are and thoroughly enjoy going through them and looking at them. But I know deep in my heart that if, A, if they all disappeared, it would be fine. I would still have my relationship to tarot. But also I can sit here and in like very nine of pentacles, right? I can enjoy their existence. I can revel in the fact that many hours of, of human creativity and ingenuity have gone into creating these magical tools so that I could experience using them and get a greater knowledge of myself in the world. Like that's that is invaluable. That is the point. That is what I love so much about tarot is how much it teaches me about myself and how it allows me to experience the world through different eyes, right? So each tarot deck is like a way to see the world through a different creator's eyes and it's so beautiful and so great. And I think another reason why people love to kind of have all of these different doorways into different perspectives on the world. It's just so magical and so wonderful. But I'm never gonna sit here and berate myself for having a certain number of them, right? I can't take them with me in the end. They're not coming with me, but what I experience here always does go with me. So beef up the experiences, get the most out of them, enjoy life, enjoy using these magical wonderful tools and having that connection with other humans, but also remember that ultimately it is you you must live with <laughs> so you know you're only accountable to yourself don't worry about what other people say so i've been yeah i think i've reached a good place with that and it's making me very happy and very content and coming and sitting down to do a reading for myself has turned into an absolute joy it is a joy i absolutely i love it <laughs> it is it is enriching in a way that I never thought it could be. I hope that I can grow this connection even deeper over time, but I'm definitely not reaching, like looking for an end goal, you know? It's about, it's about the journey. So, Death Eater. <laughs> I think that's pretty good for like third, like the first third of the year. I'm, yeah, I'm in a place of, of contentment and non-judgment, which is important too. I love being able to look at someone else's collection and go like, wow, that's amazing, that's perfect for you, and not feel judgmental, not feel wanting either. It's like both, <laughs> right? Both are bad. It's that middle path. We do not want to be judgmental, but we also don't want that like envious and desire either based on other people's experience. We just ride that middle path and accept where I am and be perfectly grateful and happy for where I am as well as perfectly happy and grateful for where other people are and it's just it's great all around you know so that's not eschewing the darkness sometimes there is darkness that needs worked on sometimes there are you know triggers and red flags and and you know harm that one is doing to themselves by their actions and behaviors based on thought patterns that need shifted and that's why we do the work that's what goes on but being overly negative and berating yourself for you know not being enough not having enough or being too much or not having too much it's it's not productive so so just if you can get to a place where you're more accepting of yourself then that's, that's the ultimate direction for me anyway. And I like being there and it's comfortable. And it's not like it's seeing the world through rose-tinted glasses or anything. It's just being accepting of everything. Good, bad, uncomfortable, comfortable, bliss, suffering, you know. Find that middle path, but be comfortable and accepting wherever you can and, you know, things tend to go well when it's like that. So I think I will be continuing on with depth here. There's lots of other things I want to work on. There's things I'd like to go deeper with. There are projects that I'm excited about getting into, some some group stuff, and as well as the deck and walk. It's been great. I'm really excited about that. It's, 
every 10 days it's like yes well what's our new card and then of course we grab the keyword on each of the Thoth versus the hermetic titles and we're like okay which one of these fits better and then we have a discussion about it it's so fun um but yeah my work with tarot is never going to be done and i'm excited about it and this first depth year is 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 wonderful and i like it i like the thought of it a lot more than like a no buy year per se because it's not about not buying one is no more righteous than anyone else for not buying something. That's just like a weird reverse flex, which I'm learning. It took me a long time to learn that, <laughs> but I'm there. It's like, it's like a weird reverse flex to be like, I could have all this stuff, but I only have this. Like it's, it's fine, but like just acceptance. Don't berate yourself. Don't accidentally judge others. Like it's fine. Be, be who you are, be where you are. And you know, meet people where they are and, and try to get to a place of understanding and in that way we'll have a much easier time connecting which is the ultimate point the shared human experience is what it's just all about but yes i will continue with the depth year i'm excited about all the things that i will get to learn and it may turn into a lifestyle this whole you know going deep versus going broad but there all will be times when things will show up and be like look that fits my practice that is something that i will get benefit from or I just think it's pretty and I think that in appreciating its beauty on a regular basis will enrich my life and if it's not hurting anybody then I'm gonna go ahead and do it without any ill emotional effect because as soon as you start to feel bad about something like I've it's happened to me before I was in the wrong state of mind and I either purged or acquired something that was forever tainted by my perspective on it at the time and it wasn't the object's fault it was my perspective on it I'm going to make the most of being in the world while i'm here so and that's not to say being reckless or ridiculous or doing anything illegal or anything but yeah i think gratitude and acceptance are like the two big flashing words of this video and it's a great place to be and and i'm happy about it so Appreciation, gratitude, and acceptance. I like it. Very good. So, that's my depth year update so far. I bought some things, but I don't feel bad about it. I've been working with some things. I've been making some great progress with my relationship to myself on all fronts. Emotionally, intellectually, physically, and spiritually. So, that's a great time. And, yeah, it's work that I really love doing and will continue to do. And I never learned it in school. <laughs> there should be just like a little mini spirituality class in school. Like not like, not like a full on religion class, but like, you know, just a little, a little something to teach people how to work with themselves and be with themselves. Because wherever you go, you take yourself with you. A lot of people trying to escape themselves these days in the world and it's just not working. So. Thank you so much for being here. If you managed to make it to the end of this extremely rambly depth year video, I commend you greatly. Okay, my memory card is just about empty. I deleted some stuff, but I'm not trying to find another one. Anyway, so thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. And I just want to see if I can pull up a quick card before it dies again. <laughs> Maybe two. About depth year. What is... Further trajectory of my path. We did. We got two. Oh, eight of cups and four of wands. Okay. Eight of cups, four of wands. What do we got? Eight of cups is. Oh, he's not walking away. He's looking towards the cups. Interesting. So we have some very stable cards right here. You know, celebration, stability of will, and then the double stability slash stagnation of emotion so i gotta watch that my heart stays in it i think specifically um it's important now this guy he's got a little nice little book on him so again um that i can stay focused and keep my heart in the on the path on the journey no one is time to to move on i don't know in that way what you move on from is always going to stay with you to a fact right things that have happened to you will have always happened to you but they live in the past so keep them in the past but know that there is a part of them within you always and 
move forward. I think this this card specifically, it's just, I think it's just saying to me that I am in a good place right now. I've reached uh, uh, like the first celebration on the road, but this isn't the end. This is only card four of, of this suit, right? There's more to go. We got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten courts to get through. So this is just the first resting place. So I'm nowhere near done. Never going to be done, but this is still relatively early days. But, you know, keep your heart, keep your heart in it. And good things will happen, so... Okay, those are my two cards for today. If that resonated with you, then all the best. But otherwise, I think that's mostly for me. I was just sharing. <laughs> there you go. So yes, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it quite a lot. More than you probably know, actually. And I will see all of you fine people in my next video. Bye.